Hello my friends and welcome to a new video. Today a comparison between two Thrustmaster wheels. The 488 GT3 wheel add-on is a one-to-one -one replica of the steering wheel used in a Ferrari 488 GT3 race car. It was introduced late 2023 and is sold for 250 euro via the Trustmaster shop or a bit cheaper via official dealers. It measures 31 cm by 17 and comes in at 11,440 grams, which makes it a very light wheel. The front plate is made out of carbon fiber with the exception of the aluminium shifters and the hardened rubber grips, everything else is plastic. It is the first GT3 wheel to have been presented so far by the French manufacturer. The Ferrari F1 wheel add-on comes closest to the 488 steering wheel for comparison. It is a one-to-one -one replica of a 2011 Ferrari Formula 1 car and also released in the same year. The Trustmaster official price is 199 euro but can also be bought at dealers with a reduction most of the time. It measures 28 by 19 cm and weighs 1295 grams, which is about uh, 150 grams more than the 488. The body is primarily made out of plastic with a thin aluminium front, metal shifters and soft rubber grips. There are a total of 11 normal buttons, two thumb switches, one D-pad and two rotary encoders present on the 488 steering wheel. The normal buttons have little travel and feel of reasonable quality when pushed. They are all stickered with a different color and assigned by a print on the frame. The rotary encoders feel sturdy to operate. They have also a value printed on them which is an asset compared to the F1 wheel. The push buttons are again very solid but feel a bit cheap when using them. They do the job well though. The D-pad, while perhaps a weird design, is very precise and easy to use but again it feels a bit cheap with the ripped plastic on it. The F1 wheel features a total of 8 normal buttons, 2 rotary encoders, 2 D-pad buttons and my absolute favorite 3 old school mechanical switches. The extra rotary dials and the large middle ornament are simply printed on. Uh, the normal buttons have a very large travel and are all decorated with some stickers. The quality of the buttons can be classified as, yeah, mediocre. The rotary encoders are made out of plastic but work very decent. They are sufficiently heavy and easy to scroll with. The D-pads have a very high resistance and feel sturdy. The metal switches at the bottom, on the other hand, are very fragile and break easily. But who cares, they are fun to flip. The shifters of the 4A8 are made out of metal and are magnetic. Apart from being precise, this provides a very satisfying click when used. The pedals of the F1 wheel are made out of scratched and brushed aluminium and are kept in position with springs. Interesting here is that you can shift up and down with only one hand. The sound, however quiet, is not as gratifying as the magnetic shifters though. Something very important with uh, a good GT wheel or Formula 1 wheel is that you have um, the rotary encoders or like the buttons that you can switch to the multiple values uh, sequential values and this is very very well done here with the f1 wheel so the rotary encoders they are very very precise they don't give any double value sometimes that is an issue uh, that i came across that um, when you scroll it that it goes down to 
the same time, but that's not the case here. Works very, very well. The rest of the buttons, yeah. I think um, what I have with the buttons is that they already... I did. If you half press them, uh, they don't give a value, so you need to press them very well for them to uh, to capture the value. You don't have any, how should I put it, yeah, tactile feedback that the press has worked correctly. While well, you hear a little click, but it could be better. Just like my driving. The plastic um, or the rubber better that is on the handles. Um, it's a bit hot outside now, so I noticed that my hands are warming up quite a lot. And the rubber is rubbing the, the skin from my hands uh, because of this. Also, I believe it is better to use these, uh, this plastic, this, this type, of type of rubber with some gloves on, instead of uh, with the bare hands. Something which is also a bit different here with this steering wheel is that there is no eye candy. So you don't have any lights that pop up or anything. It's really nothing disturbing you. And I never thought that I would say this, but yeah. In ACC, I do miss a bit of the, the lights flashing. Um, but yeah, F1 here, it doesn't have it. So there's quite a lot of differences between the two wheels. Um, starting off with the diameter, it feels better. A bit larger diameter is yeah, more natural, I think, and uh, for posture. Feels much better. The handling, I, the handling bars also of the 488 wheel are much uh, thicker than the um, F1 wheel. So you can just grip it better, I think, because it is just a bit thicker. Your hands wrap better around it. I have the feeling that for um, the F1 wheel that you really need to use some gloves, not the case with the uh, 488 wheel. Another uh, difference are the lights. So you have two lights, a bit uh, separate, uh, a bit the same like your eyes, but the same uh, distance. And um, so it just colors, three colors, so you don't have to look at them you know what the value is even without looking at them you can uh, you can see it it's not like um, uh, Technicolor rainbow um, uh, light bar that you have it's kept really simple and I can appreciate that it's something I missed with the uh, with the F1 wheel buttons so the rotary encoders at the thumbs are re replaced here with the uh, the push buttons. So up is a value more, down is a value less. Very interesting concept, very precise also. You feel when you um, change a value because it just, yeah, it clicks. You feel it click. The buttons themselves also. F1, I could push them halfway without changing the value. Not so here. I push it, the value changes. If I push it a little bit or a lot, it doesn't. Uh, it doesn't matter. It changes it. Of course, we also have the rotary encoders here, and those also have been thought about because they have this um, this opening at where the value is supposed to be. So you know blindly uh, what value it is um, because of this opening. So it's a very nice concept. In all, a very, very pleasurable uh, wheel to drive with. 
the compatibility for the 488 is all the Thrustmaster bases with a quick release implemented. Even the T818 because there is an adapter included in the package. The F1 wheel is just compatible with the wheel bases using the old quick release system. When it comes to build quality, I think there is a vast difference between both. The F1 steering wheel feels generally very cheap and there are quite some issues with it. Two of those issues I experienced firsthand. One of the three mechanical switches at the bottom got stuck behind uh, something and broke off. You could argue that it is user's error, but the design and build quality play a big role too. The other issue I had was that it just stopped shifting. Best practice dictates you to test secondhand material when you buy, but this goes double for this steering wheel. For the 488 wheel, I have not experienced any issues or are there any worrying message to be found on Reddit about it. Judging by the number of F1 steering wheels that are out on the secondhand market, I believe it has been the top seller for Trustmaster when it comes to extra steering wheels. It is no surprise really since the F1 community is quite large and Ferrari is a big name in that world. The Ferrari F1 add-on just looks very nifty until you take a closer look at it. The printed dials and the lack of any lights is certainly a bit of a letdown. But put this disappointment aside, you will have a very fun and immersive F1 experience with it. I was able to handle four buttons and the four rotary encoders even uh, without letting go of the steering wheel which makes it already reasonably efficient. The 488 wheel is not really an F1 wheel, but it could be. It all just feels more robust and immensely more efficient. Here I could operate seven buttons, the two thumb switches and the D-pad without taking my hands off the wheel. The carbon fiber makes it look stylish and although the buttons look cheap and at times feel cheap, they are still very decent for their purpose. The implementation of the four LED lights can also be called a true example on how less can be more. The grip and positioning of my hands on the steering wheel feels much more natural too. So there are actually quite a lot of improvements and I would dare to say that even with it costing 50 euro more, the added value compared to the F1 wheel really exceeds that amount by a long shot. Thank you all for watching. Leave a like if you had something from this video. Subscribe if you want to see more videos and I will see you all next video. Bye bye.